So where to begin? Well, we will start with the classic generation, horses who excelled as juveniles and have pretensions to better things this year. And the 2,000 guineas betting seems a good departure point. And of course, it's dominated by Camelot at five to two. But most improved was a massive market mover for Brian Meehan. Kieran Fallon will ride this horse nine to two. Meehan's already said he will win the Craven. We'll find out whether he will later in the week. Top offer for Roger Charlton. Once race maiden winner is six to one. Nephrite for Valley Doyle eight to one. Born to see, see the stars. Half brother is nine to one. French 15 is a 10 to one shot. 12 to one power. 14 Parish Hall who won the Dewhurst. Dragon Pulse, the winner in France yesterday, 14 to one. Abtal 16 with Daddy Dong Longlegs who's set to go to Kentucky for their Kentucky Derby and it's 20 to one and bigger the remainder. Well, let's just set this in Camelot's context, Steve. Most trainers who saw him last year felt they were always going to be fighting a losing battle. Visually very, very impressive when he came over to win the, uh, the race in post. We can talk about the, the value of the form, which is probably just fair, um, by, the, by the standard of the race, I mean, and the time was only OK, but the style was really taking, and it was only his second uh, ever race. Part of the worry about talking about it is we don't know yet that he's a confirmed runner. He's uh, um, Aidan O'Brien's um, appears to be uh, biding his time on making a firm decision about that. He's a probable rather than a, rather than a, uh, the, than a definite, as, as I understand it. Mm. But visually, he was tremendously impressive. I think the idea is there. I think the Derby's on their mind as well, and he's got a fair, fair amount of stamina in his family, and it's whether they go for both, I think, is the uh, thing that's bothering them. Guys, there seems an added incentive for Bally Doyle with this horse to go for the guineas. He's by Manger, mm -hmm. who we sadly lost a couple yep. of weeks ago. And Manger's gap on his CV, his wonderful CV as a stallion, is that he hasn't had a classic winner at a mile. Yeah. Even though he has had umpteen classic winners at other distances. Uh, absolutely. And to be honest, going back to you know, what, I, what I ended the last uh, statement with, I don't think there's any harm running a horse in the guineas. I don't think it actually mm. takes away from their chance in the derby anyway. So... Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see him run. I think he earned it the way uh, he travelled through the race. He travelled just like a good horse. He didn't win it in the style of a stayer. He won it in the style of a horse who was just classy. And it could just be that for all we didn't think that the racing post trophy had much depth at the time, Chris, that it materialises that horses in behind, like fencing, are, are well above average. Yeah, fencing had looked a, a, not a superstar, but he looked a good horse at Newbury, hadn't he? Um, so... I think what Steve said is probably right, and, and it's the case with a lot of these horses that we're looking at in the three-year-old season. It's it's not just what the form stacks up to, because in truth, a lot of them haven't met yet. They're, you're picking lines between certain horses, and it's finding the consistent ones to pick those lines between. It's more about watching the race and looking for the visual impressions to see what you're impressed with. And you were hard pressed to not be really impressed, and you couldn't have been probably impressed by a horse more during last season than Camelot. He cruised through the race, as Steve said, but he put the race to bed in a matter of strides and he, he just blasted clear. And I think Steve hit the nail on the head when he said that performance wasn't one of stamina. For all that his pedigree suggests that it'll improve for middle distances this year, that was a performance about speed. And yes, a mile on goodish ground at the back end of the season is a relative stamina test for a two-year-old, I suppose, but that was a performance about speed and class, not stamina. And he would go to the Guineas as a worthy favourite he'll probably go to the derby with as good as, if not better, chance looking at it because he's got that improvement to come with his stamina, you would think, that's drawn out given his pedigree. Well, normally speaking, the most informative two-year-old race of the season, certainly for Colts, is the Dewhurst. It wasn't running at a sensational time last autumn, but the horses out of it might yet be very useful because not only is the winner Parish Hall considered a, a real derby type, by trainer Jim Bolger and for goodness sake he knows what it takes to win one but horses in behind have been earning rave reviews as well particularly the third placed most improved and don't forget the prolific juvenile power either so what do we make of most improved and why can he turn out to be the best of this bunch Steve? Well, what to make about most improved or in terms of the price he is for the Guinness at the moment, it's ridiculous in terms of just from the outside. I mean, he may have improved enormously, but he needs to have done. This was a race where there was just over a length separated the first five. You can argue black and blue about what will come the best next year. You know, you can make a case for the horse on the outside because it was sort of uh, uh, hanging away and um, racing away from the others. You could argue that maybe the winner had the advantage of the rail. You could argue that power didn't get going, didn't get the absolute best of runs. And maybe most improved will be the one who improves the most. But 
strikes me a nine to two chance is ridiculous. If he wins the Craven, like his trainer says, very you know, very well, it looks a competitive race on paper, then yeah, fair enough. But I mean, I'll put the question back to you. Nine to two, don't you think it's uh, it's all on what he might do, not, not what he has done, surely? Well, I'll contextualise the price for you. Brian Meehan's got some form here, because you remember Delegator, second in the Guineas and See the Stars year. Mm -hmm. He came out and said it'll win the Guineas, and everyone looked through the two-year-old form and thought, yeah, he's got a chance to be a pretty good horse, but he's not that good, surely. He won the Craven, he bolted up after the Craven, he was still available briefly at 6-1 to one after yeah. blowing away his field in the Craven Stakes. Yeah. This horse most improved is 9-2, to two, and he was 40-1 to one last back end after the Dewhurst, and he hasn't run between then and now. So that gives you an idea as to how poor the current price is. Well, I think what it shows more than anything is slight doubt about Camelot running, and in terms of what they achieved, not much between a whole bunch of not just that race, just in general, the, mm. the race was, uh, the two roles were quite a messy division. I mean, the, the, the third favourite is a maiden winner at Newbury, a once race maiden winner. Again, on what it's done, a ridiculous price. I think people are trying to get ahead of the game and back what they see as possible improvers. But um, if they take Camelot out, and there really isn't a lot between uh, uh, most of the horses and what they've done. Now Chris, I know you've got a pretty keen eye on what goes on across the English Channel, and the French look to have a pretty strong hand as regards raiding our classics this time round. Let's have a look at uh, the... Criterion last back end, and we'll have a look at French 15, who was very impressive indeed. Uh, this is a son of Turtle Bowl, um, trained by Nicolas Clement. We'll have a look at the Jebel performance the other day when he mm. beat Abtal, uh, but his, his two-year-old form was, was very smart. It was. He, he's been campaigned rigorously. He had plenty of runs. He's already um, had plenty of experience, this horse, and you'll see on this day you've got Abtal on the inside in the Hamdan colours, the, the first colours, he's the one furthest to the right, and French 15, he's already, he's not travelling as well as Abtal, and Abtal to me looks like the best horse in this race. Um, French 15 had the space to wind up in, and he was given a slightly more vigorous ride. In the end, Abtal, who's had a little bit less racing and had beaten French uh, 15 three lengths in a group three at Saint Cloud at the back end of last season. Um, for me, he's not given an overly hard ride, and the two of them are pulling slightly clear of the rest. That race didn't have a massive amount of depth to it. I was working in here that Sunday, and it didn't look a particularly strong event. But the front two horses both had group class form as juveniles. Watching that back again, I still think the exact same thing that I thought at the time, that Abtal, with a run under its belt, with, will beat French 15 the next time they meet over a mile. Would you agree, Steve? I would. I thought it was steadily run as well, as in as are obviously a lot of the French races. And uh, I thought he, he just rather got first run on him. Um, they met like they've, funnily, there isn't much between them. They've met more than one. They met last year. Abtel got the better of him, if I remember rightly, that that day. I don't think there's much between them, but I would. I think I would prefer Abtel. He was given more of a trials ride, if you know what I mean. I thought of the two. Mm. Yeah. I mean, fair dues to Brian Meehan for flying the flag. For, for Great Britain mm. and, and for really stating his case for most improved because it seems that all the good horses are in Ireland and France unless unless somebody knows different. Um, well, Nephrite and Born to Sea, two really good Irish colts from last year. Uh, Born to Sea was found to be sick when he was beaten by Nephrite in his second start last year but the fact that he was able to win a listed race first time out the half brother to see the stars makes him an interesting runner. Uh, very much so. He is an interesting man, especially uh, there were uh, excuses, weren't they, for um, his defeat? Well, you know, some excuses are worth it, some uh, are worth something, some aren't. But he's interesting. I mean, you think how oh, actually the stars improved from two to three as well. In fact, the whole family, he's raised a whole raft of horses who are better three year olds. Uh, and John Oakes didn't seem to be uh, too depressed about the defeat. And I think he's, uh, he's more likely to get the trip. My worry about Nephrite would be, would he absolutely definitely get a mile? I mean, it was, again, a steadily run race that day. I think he's got tons and tons of speed in his family. And uh, um, I think Bill Anderson might well improve past him over a, you know, a truly run mile, personally. I mean, Chris, we ought to mention Top Offer again. He's mentioned in dispatches, but this is a horse trained by Roger Chelton. He's just had the one start. Charlton wanted to get him out again as a juvenile. Injury prevented him from doing so. But he was the mover before most improved. Yeah, I mean, he won a maiden at Newbury by three and a half lengths, and he was really, really impressive in doing it. His pedigree suggests that he'll probably improve for a step up in trip this year. The yard were really, really flying at the point when he won, but the visual impression of what he did on that occasion was, again, really impressive. And as I said right at the beginning, that is largely what you're basing things on with these horses, particularly 
the once raced maiden horses. I'll throw another one into the mix as well for Roger Varian Stable. Uh, Alja Mahir, who won a race at Yarmouth last season, again by, um, that was a length and three quarters quite easily. Meet a horse called Mezzotint, who's now with Marco Botti. Um, I think he was elsewhere at the time. But he's gone on and won two or three races since then. He's been beaten in a um, handicap at Pontefract at the start of this season behind Esker Love. But even so, his form was progressive afterwards. And Aljamir here looked very impressive that day. And Roger Varian's got Farage in there as well, who's um, related to Ifraj, I think. Mm. Got a fantastic pedigree. Again, it's not had much racing yet. And given that the standard is so tight between the horses that we've maybe already seen have a crack at group company, there might just be something lurking, the likes of Top Offer, the likes of Al Aljamir here, the likes of Farage, who can take a step forward and get into that kind of level of competition. A horse we know a little bit more about is Fencing, who of course was third in that Racing Post trophy. Uh, he, prior to that, won at Newbury and had earned uh, pretty good reviews from, from John Gosden. Uh, what do you make of the strength of this form, Steve? I think, it, I think it's impressive visually. I think the performance in second to Camelot was, was, had more substance to it and certainly was still still going the right way. He's a really good looking horse. I'm pretty sure you've seen him, Nick, and I've been, even been together this day. Uh, it's a type, again, you'd imagine um, would improve at three. He's interesting, he's got, I don't know, run him, he's got an entry in a free handicap this week. But that would be informative. He runs off 111, he'd be top weight, but you know, he'd, need, he'd need to be winning that easily to justify a run the kid. He's also got other entries in the Craven and things like that, but I thought it was an interesting entry uh, to go there. Um, I think if Camelot comes over, it's hard to see why he should make up that ground. But interestingly, John Gosden, uh, what quotes I've read in the build-up to this, is uh, he's been very, very positive about, about in, a, in a sort of slightly understated way. He just uh, comments like how pleased he is with him, rather than, you know, it's doing this and it's doing that. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he had a pretty good season, the horse. Mm. Mm. Well, what are your thoughts on fencing, Chris? Um, I've, I've been impressed in that run at Newbury. I thought he still looked a little bit green. He took a, a little while to assert, really. Once he got to the front, he, he was just took a little while to find his stride. And in the end, he went away from Telwire. He went away from horses that maybe had that little bit more experience at that point, given that that was the first time that he's put his head in front. And he did just look to be taking a little while to get on top. But as Steve says, if Camelot comes over, you watch the Racing Post Trophy back and there's no way that he can beat him. Surely not. I mean, if, if, if they turn up, even... He's going to have to improve a fair bit just to beat Camelot, even if Camelot doesn't take another step forward, which you would imagine he would. My overall thoughts on fencing were that he's going to prove a group horse. I don't think he'll prove a right top notcher. But he might yet have a, a pretty productive season. Let's just recap that Guineas betting for you. Camelot is the 5-2 to two market leader, 9-2 to two most improved, 6 top offer, 8-1 to one Nephrite, 9 born to see, and it is 10-1 to one and bigger the remainder.